I guess vacuuming didn't really do a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hello, and how are ya? I know it's been a long time, but the kids are finally back in school, and I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. And we are in a different location than the last time you saw me. We are in front of my prized bookcase. I am a huge, huge, huge reader. I love decorating my prized bookshelf. And today, we are going to start with a, hopefully, an easy project of taking one of my books and doing sprayed edges. If you are a bookish person and have been on the internet, especially if you are into the fantasy romance genre, then you probably heard of Fourth Wing. I unfortunately missed out on the first edition sprayed edges, so today I'm going to try to do my own sprayed edges. If you have not read this, read, read it, read it. I generally read on my e-reader or my Nook, and I only buy like hard copies of my favorite books. So if it's going to go on my bookshelf and have a spot on my e-reader, then it is really, really good. So before we get into this craft, I just want to let you know a couple of updates on my shop. I have a couple of dragons sitting in there ready for y'all. All right, so in order to do sprayed edges, I armed myself with the book, of course, and I went on Etsy and I bought a stencil for the lovely dragons on the spine. So let's go ahead and go down to a flat surface so we can start working and I'll show you what supplies I have gathered up. I have gathered an old paper bag and painter's tape to cover and protect my book, some scrap wood, and some supplies from ye old hardware store, including black gold spray paint, different grits of sandpaper. I originally bought these clamps, but decided to get some carriage bolts to make my DIY book press along with some wing nuts and some washers. Making the book press was pretty simple. I just drilled holes in each corner, big enough to fit a carriage bolt and secured them with washers and wing nuts. Covering this book with a paper bag brought me back to middle school and high school when we had to cover our school textbooks with paper to protect them. Painter's tape not only came in handy to secure the paper back onto my book, but it also didn't tear any of the inside cover when I went to go take it off later. I definitely would not use packaging or scotch tape for this job. I also used the painter's tape to protect the book's headbands near the spine. In some books, the text block when the book is closed have ridges in them. The pages aren't smooth. I was afraid if I left the uneven pages then I would have bleeding when I went to do my stencil dragons. I needed to somehow sand the edges as smooth as possible. In order to allow my sander to get to the pages, I had to move the book covers towards the back of the book before I pressed down my DIY book press. As best as I could, I made sure that the text block stuck out a little bit from the book press's edge. I honestly don't know if this step was necessary, but it made me feel more confident. This may have been a little overkill, but I chose to use four grades of sandpaper with my electric sander. If you don't have a sander at home, you could just wrap the sandpaper around a block of wood and sand it by hand. I started with the 180 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to 400 grit to get the text block as smooth as possible. After sanding, you're going to have a lot of dust. I used my vacuum to suck up as much of that book dust as I could before spraying it to make sure that the spray paint sticks to the text block well. Now it's time to put down a layer of gold spray paint. If I could go do it again, I would choose a more brighter metallic gold over this bronze one, but this still turned out okay. For this layer, I sprayed a couple of thin layer coats instead of one thin one. I also only sprayed the large edge and not the top and bottom because only the large edge will get stenciled. <sighs> it is, it's, it's not hot, it's more like humid. I don't even know, it's, it's super humid outside. The sun's not even shining, but I feel, like I took a shower. So I sprayed the gold, which the thing that took the longest was sanding it down. So the reason why I did it is because the vinyl that I'm going to put on the edge, I don't want like ridges where the spray paint will go through and cause bleeding issues, which I hope won't happen since I took the time. The text block isn't separate from the binding. I had to like fold the book up like this in order to be able to sand it. But I'm not sure how the pages line up when it's open like this if it will line up the same when I when I close them but I did my initial gold which is turned out 
a little darker than I thought and the tutorials that I've seen online said that you should break the edges before oh my god those so much the it's a whole bunch of dust Whew. and it smells like spray paint of course it smells like spray paint that didn't stick as bad as I thought it was going to stick which is pretty cool Whew. <laughs> I guess vacuuming didn't really do a whole lot <laughs> okay probably should have worn a mask when I did that spray paint turned more bronze than gold but compared to the regular naked paper I think it looks pretty good all right so I definitely want to make sure I know which one is the top but top top with the book closed, it was time to slide it back into my book press. I marked the middle so that I could get the placement of the dragons as even as possible. I ended up ordering my vinyl dragon stencil from Tarly Studio on Etsy. You can get the digital stencil, physical stencil like I did, or have them spray the edges for you. They do ship from Australia, so if you are in the US, know that it will take longer for shipping and it might be higher than you're used to paying. I carefully weeded my stencil so that all was left were the dragons and the stars. I used painter's tape to carefully transfer the dragons onto my text block, taking care that all of the details get placed properly and have a strong hold onto the edges of the text block. I don't know what it is with me and spray paint lids, but I cannot easily ever get them off. I feel like I have to put too much muscle into prying the lid off that I am afraid of doing it so brutally that I'll end up spray painting myself as I pop the top off. I had to resort to cutting the lid off, which is a shame because now I don't have a lid for the paint when I store it. Just as with the gold paint, I took my time spraying thin, even layers on my book edges, making sure I changed my angles of the spray paint, as well as the position of the book press. This time around, I made sure to spray all of the sides of the text block black. Before peeling my stencil, I needed to make sure the paint was dry, so I helped it along by fanning it. I can't tell you how satisfying it was to carefully peel these stickers off to reveal all the dragon and the star details. I honestly was surprised that this worked. I for sure thought that I would mess this project up so badly that I would have to go out and buy a new copy of Fourth Wing. All there was left to do was take my newly stenciled book out of its book press, take the protective paper bag off, crack the painted pages, and admire my custom sprayed copy of Fourth Wing. turned out a lot lighter than I wanted it to. I was too afraid to go too heavy on the paint so that the pages would pull apart easily. If I were to do this again, I'd make a few more layers of the black to make sure that it was more opaque. Have you ever sprayed any of the edges of your favorite books? If so, how did it go? As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.